Welcome to our basic dermatoscopy course. With the help of our video lessons, we give you a practical and clear insight into the basics of dermatoscopy. At the end of the lecture series, you will have a firm grasp of the foundations of and be able to recognize important patterns in dermatoscopy. You will also gain an in-depth insight into the interpretation algorithm and learn to apply it to the most important skin changes, such as nevus cell nevus, melanoma, or basalioma. With our basic course, we offer you a variety of dermatoscopic images, which gradually introduce you to the method of interpretation and cover important content. Let's start with some basics. Lesson 1. General Basics At the end of this video lesson, you will have reviewed the physical basis and the structure of the skin and gained an understanding of the interpretation of the color of a lesion in terms of depth. Let's start with the physical basics. Let us now move on to another example. The basic pattern of this navus cell navus is also characterized by clots. It is uniformly pigmented and relatively sharply bordered. One recognizes sporadic dots with dark pigmentation. However, in this border area, it is noticeable that a second pattern is added. Here you can see radial lines that have a light brown Bordeaux reddish pigmentation and look different from the rest of the navus. This area at the edge is called a structural break, in this case also with a color change. We do not have a clear malignancy criterion yet, but a follow-up of this navus should be performed. Let us now switch to the basic pattern of circles. Here you can see an example of an image where the circles are relatively difficult to recognize because the color difference is not very strong. The circles have a dark pigmented edge on the outside and are clearly lighter on the inside. In this section, they form the basic structure of the navus. The image interpretation algorithm is the same for every melanocytic skin lesion. Therefore, get used to a uniform procedure straight away in order not to miss anything. Before you look at a skin lesion under the dermatoscope, first look at it macroscopically and apply the ABCDE rule. We'll discuss this in detail presently. You will then place your dermatoscope over the lesion and check whether the macroscopic impression corresponds to the dermatoscopic impression, all the while observing the ABCD rule. After this, take a look at the basic pattern and any other patterns. Here, it depends on the arrangement and symmetry. If different patterns are arranged harmoniously, the lesion is inconspicuous at this stage. However, caution is advised if patterns alternate diffusely and overlap. To finish up, Look at other criteria, such as vascular morphology, which we will discuss in more detail in this lesson. This interpretation process is our suggestion for a structured analysis of a skin lesion. Let's briefly summarize what we have learned about benign melanocytic lesions. Assess both macroscopically and dermatoscopically using the ABCDE rule. Especially as a beginner assessing one's first navy, one becomes familiar with the macroscopic image and can quickly gain confidence. We therefore recommend looking at clinically harmless navy with a dermatoscope at the beginning of your dermatoscopy career to train your eye. Benign navy are often symmetrical, have well-defined borders, are uniformly colored, are generally smaller than 5 mm, usually not raised and appear similar to the remaining navy of the integument. There are no basic patterns that are purely benign, and several patterns can exist at the same time. A symmetrically distributed pattern is more likely to indicate benignity. Further criteria, such as vessels and so on, are rarely present. For more pictures, we recommend taking our quiz. Here we train your gaze and you get to know many different benign navus variants. Let us start with the first melanoma and judge it using the interpretation algorithm. At first glance, one recognizes an asymmetry of both geometry and coloring. The lesion is peripherally poorly defined. You'll recognize two different colors. These are asymmetrically distributed. The diameter is approximately 10 millimeters. The ABCD rule alone suggests the diagnosis of melanoma. Let's take a look at the patterns now. The lesion consists of two parts, a dark and a light pigmented area. The dark pigmented area consists mainly of clods and has a slightly checkered color. The light pigmented area is partially structureless. In addition, you can see some small dots. You'll remember that if the lesions are only mildly pigmented, 
you can judge the vessels better and should use these as an additional criterion. In the entire light area, you will find dot-shaped vessels fitting for a flat lesion. Dot-shaped vessels which do not fade under pressure of the dermatoscope are indicative of melanoma. Lesson 6. Non-melanoma skin cancer. In the last two lessons, we discussed melanocytic skin changes in detail. From this lesson onwards, we will focus on unpigmented malignant lesions, which are called non-melanoma skin cancer, or NMSC for short. We will explain which tumors fall under this definition, which typical malignancy criteria exist, and address in particular the morphology of vessels and their development. The term NMSC covers both basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma, and its precancerous form, actinic keratosis. NMSC can present in both pigmented and non-pigmented forms. In this lesson, we will discuss classic dermatoscopic characteristics of NMSCs. Here you can see another example. Stop the video briefly and go through the most important criteria for the diagnosis. Ready? At first glance, you see an unpigmented, poorly defined lesion. As basal yoma specific criteria, you can see polymorphic vessels crossing the center as well as a structureless, orange-colored area and scalene. Therefore, the diagnosis is elementary. It is a basal cell carcinoma. Let us now switch to another example. In this example, the characteristic criteria for a basal cell carcinoma are particularly interesting. The only pattern present is one made up of lines. Here, you can also recognize the spoke wheel that is, the common base and radial lines extending from it. Since the lesion is predominantly skin-colored, the vessels can be assessed easily. Lesson 8. Squamous cell carcinoma and actinic keratosis. In this lesson, we deal with the dermatoscopic criteria of squamous cell carcinoma and its precancerous stage, actinic keratosis. For this purpose, we will interpret typical image examples together. In principle, the dermatoscopic criteria for unpigmented malignant lesions also apply to squamous cell carcinoma and actinic keratosis. To review, let's briefly summarize these characteristics from Lesson 6. Ulceration, serous crusts, clothing fibers as an indirect sign of ulcerations, scaling, horn, and vessels crossing the center of the lesion. Let us now turn our attention to these specific criteria. Let us now move on to another frequent skin change, seborrheic keratosis, which is sometimes called senile warts. Just as solar lentigo, seborrheic keratosis can imitate a melanocytic lesion and thus represents an important differential diagnosis of malignant melanoma. It results from a benign proliferation of the stratum corneum and spinosum. The appearance of seborrheic keratosis can be quite diverse. Sometimes pseudopods suspicious for malignancy may occur. Together, we would like to discuss a few criteria with which you can quickly identify a case of seborrheic keratosis. The most important criteria are horn and pseudohorn cysts, which appear as white or yellowish milky dots or clods. These are intraepidermal keratin cysts. Another criterion is a so-called brain-like appearance. You can recognize jiri and sulky. These are keratin-filled invaginations of the epidermis, with different pigmentation, Another pattern which often appears in the facial area is the fingerprint-like pattern. This results from parallel light brown stripes in flat seborrheic keratoses. In order for you to better remember, we have prepared two picture examples for you. Here you can see a beginning, but still very small, seborrheic keratosis. As discussed earlier, it resembles a melanocytic lesion. However, you will quickly recognize a classic criterion of seborrheic keratosis, 